So I'm just about done bulking the main shape out on this mask, and I'm liking the way this is looking. Uh, how's yours coming along over there, Bill? Oh, I'm done. Oh. Hey there, fellow maker. Welcome down to the shop. Bill here today. I'm gonna do some sculpting, but I'm not that great at it, so I called in a ringer. It's Nick! This is Nick from Modulus Props. Probably aware of his work. If not, then we'll have links down in the description you can go to. But Nick has made some really fantastic masks like these fellas from Dishonored. Yeah, super fun to sculpt. I love doing these geometric designs and I've done a lot of that. One thing I'm really interested in doing lately is more organic sorts of sculpts. Something like this, the yeah. skulls and actually you've got a whole book of skulls. So today, Nick and I are going to each sculpt some sort of mask thing. He's got a head form there. I've got my lovely head form right here. We're gonna grab some clay and get started. Of course, if we're sculpting, we need clay and we're going with monster clay. This is the medium. This is the monster clay medium. It's the one I typically use. It's good for doing like this sort of size sculpt where it holds good detail, but it's still soft enough that you can work with it pretty quickly. Great, and this, this is a box full of light. This is my clay warming oven, complete with adjustable temperature. So it's pretty simple, just a 150 watt light bulb in there. Oh, that is, that's like melted chocolate now. Yeah, so it melts <laughs> the clay really quickly. We won't need it to be in a liquid state, uh, but it will cool off quickly enough where we can uh, pull it out of there and, and be able to get it onto our armatures pretty quickly. Great, let's get started. So we're doing some original designs today and Nick brought some great references. So this book I picked up from Amazon, this is a, a book of animals skulls, which is great. I often see sculptors that use this for reference and for inspiration. So it has everything from, from bird skulls to bat skulls and cat skulls, small, tiny skulls, huge skulls. This is great for getting ideas of shapes of things and texture for bone if you're doing a, a bone-like sculpt. Also got a bunch of printouts here. So these are just various things I found. Some are artists, I love following their work. This one is from Game of Thrones. Apparently these are wyvern skulls that were in the show. This is a skull from Miss Monster Mel, one of my favorite sculptors and mask makers. These are some other skulls from other makers that I follow. Uh, some skulls that I printed out from the movie Labyrinth, which has some neat designs. So ton of inspiration here and some good ideas of, of things that we can do. And then over here, um, I wanna do something that's maybe a little more biomechanical. So I want some mechanical parts. I have all these Griebel's bits and bobs that I just hang on to and these will get embedded in the clay uh, to add more accent details and those will get molded along with everything else. So I'm just kind of picking out some favorite bits and kind of picking out some designs that I like before we start throwing clay on our faces. So the first thing we need to do is just start bulking the main shape of our mask out here. What I have is an armature. This is the Ed Head, which is made by Monster Makers. They're also the makers of the clay we're going to use, this uh, Monster Clay Medium. So what we've done is we've melted this clay a little bit so it's nice and soft and pliable. And now we can just start basically mashing shapes on here little by little. And I have an idea of the size and shape of this mask. It's basically going to be a half mask. So I'm just gonna start bulking out kind of a main outline of a shape that will cover the eyes and the nose and end kind of at the mouth. And then we'll start building details on top of that. Yeah, it seems to be holding pretty well on this. I wasn't quite sure if people treat these Ed heads with some sort of material. Uh, either to get the clay to hold better or to release, but I think just as is it will be fine. I mean, this material is pretty porous, so it holds the clay pretty well. What we're doing is, is bulking out the main shape, and we need to do this sort of all at once, because after a while the clay will become less sticky, which means if we take a, a piece of soft clay and try to stick it to clay that is cooled, it won't stick all that well. So we wanna make sure that we get all the, the main shape of the mask built up right at the start here. I'm gonna leave openings for the eyes. We could close the eyes up entirely, but for me to gauge how thick the mask is on the face, I think I'm gonna leave the eyes open since we know they're gonna to have to be open anyways when we cast them. This HydroCal's a real heat sink. It's cooling the, the clay down really fast. Yeah, this clay cools pretty quickly. I'm gonna actually stick this back in our oven here and crank it up to 11. 
So even though I definitely want some sort of mechanical aspect to this, I want to start with more of just a basic skull or, or maybe something a little stylized. I really like the big eyes on this, like maybe it was a bird skull or something. So I'm, I'm really just focused on making something that looks vaguely skull shaped. Low bar, <laughs> going for low expectations. It's interesting how much the properties change as it cools and it cools quickly because when I grab it, uh, right out of the hopper, it's really pliable, but just a minute or two later, it's this much more rigid state. You can rough house with it. You can you can really shove it around and, and it, it pushes back, which I actually like. It depends a lot on the, the temperature you're working in, the temperature of your shop. Yeah. So in the summer, the clay tends to stay cool a lot longer right. than in the winter and the fall. Animals that don't have big noses or noses in the same spot that people do, it, it can be hard to sort of disguise that. You need to leave room in the mask for your nose, but you maybe want a different shaped nose around that, which means we just need to bulk it out in the right places. So far, we've only been using our hands. I actually haven't done a ton of sculpting like this. I do have all my other tools ready to go, but I'm gonna see how far I can get with just my hands. The, uh, the clay, we didn't really wait for it to get up to temperature. It's a little cool, so it's not sticking very well. I got my heat gun here, and as I heat that, you can see it start to melt a little bit. That's really all it takes. Now it's all smeary, and I can kind of manipulate it a little bit more and press it into the surface so that it sticks down a little bit better. Angry skull. Purr. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. A couple of things that I can point out that will help to maybe make it look more skull-like if that's what you're going for. That is what I'm going for. So one of the things you'll notice on, on human skulls and a lot of animal skulls is this thing called the zygomatic arch, which is basically your cheekbones. So you can see a lot of these examples that we have here, they have those features built in. You can see these ridges that basically follow under the eyes here. So having these, these shapes in here help to define the, sh the shape of the face and make things look really skull-like. Yeah, so even if you're trying to do something that's like a, like a vampire skull or something mythological, having that basic humanoid form under it, people will recognize right away. Then they'll feel, ooh, wait, there's something wrong with it. It's different a little bit. But having that recognition is a psychological thing, a pattern recognition thing that we all do as humans. That's a face. And then you have that weird, like, Oh, but it's, there's something off about it. And the more you know about the underlying anatomy, this is key, you hear a lot of sculptors talk about this, is being familiar with the bone structure and even muscle structure and, and depending on how much detail you're going for, we're kind of stopping at the bone layer. Yeah. But even knowing some of that underlying anatomy helps to make things look real or at least believable. Yeah. So we've left the clay in here a little bit longer. You can see that it's actually kind of sticky now. When I first pull it out, it sticks to my hands, but then it cools just enough, but it remains really, really pliable. So if we're trying to bulk out shapes quickly, this is a really good state to have the clay in to do that. So here it is in almost a liquidy state. I mean, you can see it cools off pretty quickly and it's pretty warm, so you need to be careful not to burn yourself. But also you can see that as I work it, as it cools down just a little bit, it comes basically right off my, my fingers. And it also doesn't stick to tools, which is nice. So there are a few ways of warming up monster clay, and another way is to use a crock pot. So you can see that I've had this clay in here for a while, and it's basically a soup. It's, it's in a liquid state, so it is pretty hot to the touch. Uh, this is great if you're doing a clay pour into a mold, but it's also a great way to just heat up clay really, really quickly. You can also use a microwave. You need to be careful when you use a microwave because it will heat the clay from the inside out. So it, it will look not molten when you take it out, but when you stick your hand in the middle, you might get a handful of molten clay. So you need to be careful not to burn yourself if you use the microwave. Hey, while we're working on that, I'd like to take a quick moment to thank our patrons over at patreon.com slash punished props. It's because of you that we get to work on these fantastic projects in our wonderful shop space, along with some other very talented makers. If you'd like to join in on the fun, you can head on over there right now, get access to behind the scenes vlogs here in the shop. Also, we'll do an extra credit video for all of our builds, including this one right now and you'll get early access to all of those build videos. So head on over to patreon.com slash punished props and consider throwing us a dollar today. Thank you very much, and let's get back to the build. So I'm maybe like 
half an hour into what I've got, still using my hands, just trying to kind of get the expression right. It's kind of wide-eyed and bewildered right now, so I think I want it maybe to be a little squintier, maybe add some more material in there. But I'm also trying to look at it from a lot of different angle, angles. I want it to be kind of symmetrical, looking at it straight down. So instead of looking at it straight on like this, looking at it from the top down, you can look at it upside down. That'll help you see it more objectively and figure out where you may need to fix the symmetry. A lot of different options. Got some more clay. I want to bulk out the cheekbone here a little bit, but you said that this stuff doesn't necessarily want to stick because this is very warm and that's cold. Right. What do I want to do? So what you can do is we can rough up the surface a little bit and that yeah. will help that clay to stick a little bit better. Right. So if we take one of these rakes. My Vulpin Props branded rake. Perfect. So use that basically just to, to scratch rough, up the surface. scratch up the surface and then that clay should stick a lot better. Cool. So this is still very pliable, so I should be able to just sort of mash that on there. Kind of bulk out my cheekbone a little bit more. So I'm trying to uh, guide sort of the, the lines. So like this comes up and into the eye, and then uh, this plane here goes over the nose to like a ridge there, but then the edge of it again goes into, kind of terminates into the eye. And then there'll be another edge, the bottom of the mask will be down here. So that, that plane here is gonna go up like that and then around the head. So I'm at the point now where I'm sort of refining some of the some of the detail on this mask. So for example, I wanted to accentuate some of these crests here above the eyes. So I'm actually just going in with a fingernail. And this is monster clay that's been cool to room temperature now, but I can still move it around just enough where I can shape it. And I'm using my fingernail kind of as a as a tool. Like I can still get a finger into these spots without having to use tools yet. So at this point, I'm starting to think about symmetry on this mask, and I want to make sure, even though it's kind of a, a skeleton bone structure, it doesn't need to be totally perfectly symmetrical. I want it to be pretty close. So one thing I can do to check that is if I put a light directly above it, it will accentuate the shadows on it. So now as I look straight on, I can see where it's a little bit off from side to side. So this light will help me kind of match up the symmetry from left to right. Nope, stuck to my thumb. Like, oh, ow. ow. I've decided to use some model making, some plastic pieces here to augment my sculpt. So I whipped up a couple of little pieces. I think this is what's going to hold the strap. Eventually there will be an elastic strap around this mask and this is where it will connect on the backside. So I made this out of uh, Sintra and styrene and some screws, quick little bit of model making. Now I figured, I think it's gonna go here and I gotta make room for it. I wanna make it look like it's kind of embedded in the sculpt. So I'm gonna press it down and remove a bit of clay. There we go. So I think I may have to put some more clay in there, but kind of like that. That looks pretty cool. I'll just go in and sculpt the clay to make it look like it's kind of more surrounding this part here. So I'm at the point where I want to start using some of these little sculpting tools, and this is one that I use quite often. This is a loop tool made by Kemper. This is the W21. So it has a tiny little wire loop on the end. One of the reasons I use this tool a lot is because of the other end, which has this nice, tapered sort of smooth curved surface, which I, I think of as an extension of my finger. So it can get into tighter spots. So I stuck these guys on there and sort of fared out the difference between them, but I, I do want there to look like there's a little bit of a gap. So I'm thinking about just, just kind of rounding it over and smoothing it out a bit. But now there's just a little bit of a ridge right there between the clay and the, the solid piece. A little bit of separation. When I weather it, I want paint to get caught down in there. Now that I've got my base shape on this mask pretty much all laid out, I want to go in and start refining some of the forms and smoothing out some of the spots that I don't want to have a lot of texture to them. So for example, I can take this tool, this W21 from Kemper, and I can use that to smooth out where some of the different pieces of clay come together to hide those seam lines.
Another tool I can use to smooth out some of these forms and to blend shapes is this, actually it's a homemade tool I have, which is a guitar string just pinched in the end of this brass tube. And basically this just acts as a very fine rake. So what I'll do is I will go over in different directions and sort of flatten out the areas where I, I don't want there to be a lot of bumpy surface texture. I'm just uh, kind of blocking out the perimeter of my skull. I've got my attachment doodads in there and this part will not be in the final piece so I'm removing a bunch of that so I can have nice clearly defined edges of my mask. <laughs> this is definitely the one that I got out of like the cheap set of of uh, sculpting tools. The yeah. end of it's just bending a ton. No, use these, these are better. They yeah, that's, be that's quite a bit more durable than this. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> womp womp. <laughs> Buy good tools. Yeah. Oh, look at that, it doesn't bend. Even though I'm kind of at the stage where I'm mostly focusing on detail, if I did want to go back and change something major at this point, I shouldn't be afraid to do that. Like I can always go back in and if I see something that's way wrong, I can fix it. And it's, it's no problem to go backwards and take care of those things. I've added a thing, just a little bit more mechanical detail. I believe this collar, this metal part here, is from an old HVLP sprayer that I destroyed using a catalyzed filler primer. But it gets to live on. Inside the nose hole here at the end of this, I'm adding in some texture. I want this to end up being a dark spot when the mask is all done and painted. So I'm just gonna add some texture that will hold the paint and, and just sort of make it look dark and textury. And this is a ball stylus tool that I'm using to do that. I went and stole one of Nick's tools. I'm gonna to try some of the texture stuff that he's been doing on his. Just adding like little indents and stuff. I don't want it to be smooth. I want this to have not lots of texture. So this is kind of more of a hammered texture, um, but I really like how it looks. So I'm gonna keep doing it. These tools that Nick has, he doesn't know this, but I'm gonna take them. <laughs> One of the things I left sort of for the end of the sculpt here is the teeth. So there are a couple ways to do teeth. You can actually sculpt them separately in something like a different clay, like Sculpey, that you can then bake and then have something rigid that you can stick into the clay. What I'm doing here though is just a little bit simple and a little bit quicker. I'm just sculpting the teeth right in the monster clay. I've been having a lot of fun with my little hammer, adding hammered marks and hiding my crimes because this looks kind of cool. Here's what it looked like before all smoothish. <laughs> so I'm just going over with different sized bits here to get detail around the sides and then going with the big guy and just kind of adding more. And I'm going to add another layer or two of this kind of texture or different types of texture. But this one's making a huge difference. He's shaking his head no. No it isn't. <laughs> yes it is. Another thing I can do to add some texture to this is I can take the stippling sponge. It's a coarse stippling sponge and I'll actually use it to press into the clay and it leaves behind these tiny little pit marks and it adds a really nice texture that will pick up paint really well later. It's pretty handy. Look, can I see that? Thank you. I've done all of my hammered texture. It took me like half an hour to tap this whole thing. I wanna add another layer of texture so I went and stole Nick's sponge and I'm just gonna kind of sporadically add some pitting to this. What's cool about this too is it looks like anywhere that's still kind of shiny from my thumbs all over this uh, is getting kind of more matte finish. So this is just kind of breaking everything up a little bit and I'm getting very excited. I want to add a, just another layer of texture. I want some very gentle scratches. So I got a wire brush. I know they make sculpting tools for this kind of thing, but I don't have one. So I'm using my wire brush to very gently add like wear and tear and scratching to the protruded edges. Anywhere that's sticking out the end of the nose maybe. Just if this is a mask that gets handled a lot, um, it'll be scratched and worn in some places. I want to add a couple scratch marks and uh, what are called suture lines on this mask, which is basically the joints between the bones. And I have this piece of clay here to practice on because I'm not quite sure how this is gonna look. One way to do it is to use something like this. This is a ribbon tool. So this is actually removing clay, you can see as I go. 
which makes it a little bit easier to finish and smooth out. Another way to do it is to use something like this, which is just a real sharp pointer tool. It makes a finer line, but it doesn't actually remove any material. So it's a little bit harder to smooth out. Another way we can add cracks to this is actually we'll put some plastic wrap over the top of that. And then when we take that same pointy tool and draw in lines, it sort of helps to keep that edges of those lines really smooth. So it's a good way to add a really subtle detail and subtle texture to it. So I want there to be a big old crack, a crack on my uh, face here. So I've got this ribbon tool and I'm just carving out some material along that line that I drew. And this kind of smooths the area out, but I will go in with my uh, texture tools and just re-add that texture. I want it to look like the crack has been stitched back together so I have actual staples and I'm just gonna stab them in the face and it'll look like it's held together with staples. The last thing I need to do in my teeth here is they're pretty rough and I wanna have them a little bit smoother. So I have some isopropyl alcohol here, 99%, and a Taclon brush, which is a synthetic bristle. And I'm just gonna take a little bit of alcohol on the brush and smooth these out. And alcohol is not a very strong solvent on monster clay, so I can do this and not have to worry about the alcohol just turning this into mush. But it gives me just enough smoothing to make these look a little bit more like teeth. Sculpt is done. The very last thing I'm gonna do is smooth out a few of the areas where I have a really, really rough texture, and I wanna kinda of just go over that with a, a light pass of heat, which I'm gonna use my butane torch for that. So just very quickly, not letting this rest in one spot for too long. And I can kind of see as the clay gets glossy, I know that it has melted just a little bit. Oh, no, 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 no! Our sculpts are finished, or at least we are done with them for now. We're calling them done. We're calling it good. <laughs> that was crazy fun, Nick. I haven't done sculpting like this in a really long time. I feel like I learned a lot. Hopefully you learned something too. How do you feel about how yours turned out? I'm really, really happy with what I have. I think both of us have awesome designs. It's cool to see the difference in the techniques in using the same kind of clay. Mm -hmm. Yours with the more mechanical feel, yeah. and mine with a little bit more of an organic feel, using the same tools in the same clay. Right. Um, mine changed kind of during the whole process. I was originally gonna go for more of a bone. This is more of a hammered metal kind of texture. Mm -hmm. And I think eventually when we mold and cast them, I want to cold cast this with some metal powders. I think that would look really cool. I think that would look really yeah. cool. In fact, you're gonna want to subscribe because next week we will be molding and casting both of these and you're gonna want to find out how. Nick, thank you so much for all of the help today. Where can the friends at home go see what you've been working on? People can find me at modulusprops.com and Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at modulusprops. Right, and we'll have links to all those down in the description. Please go follow Nick because he's got some pretty fantastic stuff in the works. Definitely don't want to miss them. As always, thank you to our patrons over on patreon.com slash punishprops. If you'd like to become one and get access to some exclusive content, you can head on over there and consider throwing us a buck. So thank you. If you've got any questions about this particular build, let me know down in the comments or go bug uh, Nick over on Instagram. I'm sure he'd be happy to help you out. Absolutely. All of the tools and materials we use will be linked down in the description. If you'd like to follow along, I personally am gonna get some of those styluses, the ball stylus. The ball stylus tools. Yeah, that did all the hammering. I'll be buying a set of those immediately. That's everything for the build today. Thank you so much. We'll see you in the next one. Bye. I'm pretty happy where it has gotten so far, uh, except for that spot on the nose where I hit it with my ring. <laughs> So I'm about at the point where I want to start using some tools. One of my favorites is this Kemper tool. It's the W24, which is probably, nope, sorry, start over, wrong one. <laughs> Get your <laughs> together, Nick. <laughs> We're gonna be molding and casting these visors. So if you haven't subscribed already. Visors? <laughs> <laughs>
No, we got a big visors. No. Oh, I'm done. I need to look at Nick. I looked the wrong way. It just looks like poop. 